Hey everybody, welcome to St. Michael's College. Welcome to Sheree Hall uh, for alumni. Welcome back. Uh, so we're in the uh, far end of Sheree Hall here. Um, so uh, again, I've been asked to do a little, few demonstrations, hopefully to entertain you all, make you thinking about some chemistry, uh, particularly for kids out there. This is uh, Some of these are part of demonstrations I do for all sorts of kids. Uh, here also the um, St. Michael's College Chemistry Club, which is part of the American Chemical Society. We do a lot of different magic shows and chemical demonstrations, outreach things. So it's all part of that and uh, just sort of some fun. End of the semester, finally, graduation just happened. Hopefully some of you were able to join that virtually. Uh, for the most recent alums, welcome. Um, so I'm just going to get into it <clears throat> and again show some interesting chemistry. So if you notice, I've got a few uh, balloons right next to me here and they're both lighter than air. So if I let this go, it'll go right out of the picture. So again, lighter than air. <clears throat> and this is the one um, we expect. So this is actually just filled with helium gas. And uh, I actually don't usually do this when it's part of the demonstration because again, we talk about when we do these demonstrations, where do we find uh, helium on the periodic table? Uh, why do we give kids full of, um, you know, if you go to the zoo, you get a helium balloon, why? Well, because helium is inert. It's a noble gas, it does really nothing. So just for comparison's sake, what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna blow it up. I'm gonna light it on fire and see what happens. So, you know, I have come backing up a little bit. You'll notice also, I do have my safety glasses on. My assistant, uh, my wife's here visiting as well. So she's actually out in the hallway uh, ready if needed. So here we go. So I'm just gonna light this. I'm gonna step back just for safety reasons and we'll see what a helium balloon does when you light it on fire. So hopefully that didn't ruin the speaker or anything else. Uh, nothing happens. It pops. Again, the flame just melts the polymer that makes the balloon up and it pops. And again, the helium being inert doesn't mix with air, doesn't do anything. It mixes but doesn't react. So here's what we normally do. And again, these are... So here again is a different one, lighter than air, so I let it go, it goes up. But in this case, what I have is a balloon filled with hydrogen gas, so H2. Um, so again, very different, also lighter than air. It's the first element, hydrogen, is on the periodic table. Uh, so it's even lighter than helium. So again, it's able to float the string, float the balloon. Now, of course, when hydrogen is in fact reactive, and again, there's lots of things in history where we talk about, you know, the Hindenburg, which you know very few people you know know about anymore, historically. Um, and again, it is quite reactive. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, just kind of show you what happens. So again, we light this up. I'm going to step back. Uh, this is loud, so maybe you turn down the sound. I don't, I've never done this recording, so maybe turn down the sound. But here we go. Ready? Set. Hydrogen balloon. So quite loud. So again, one of the smaller labs. Actually, you could hear a uh, little bit of reverberate, reverberation off some of the things. That was pretty cool. Uh, one of my favorite demos. So what happens? Well, okay, hydrogen is flammable. But again, the hydrogen was in the balloon, just sitting there quietly, not reacting. So again, it doesn't necessarily react until we provide the flame. Then what happens? And this is kind of the neat thing to think about if we take it very slowly, but what's happening when we actually blow up that balloon? What do things need to react? So again, think about this, and when we're doing these live, we, we get kids to ask those sort of things. So what do we need to react? Well, certainly, we need a fuel source, something to burn. So that's the hydrogen. The hydrogen's burning. We need some sort of ignition source. So again, I used a flame in this case to actually get that fire going. But we also need, anyone know the last one? You know, we're breathing it in right now. Oxygen. So with oxygen, then it's able to actually burn. And we think about it now. So what's happening? So I take the balloon and actually kind of, I don't know, kind of watch this as almost. Here's my hydrogen balloon right there. You can still see the H2 kind of back to normal size. So just like the helium balloon, the first thing that happens is the flame pops the balloon. The balloon then lets all the hydrogen out. The hydrogen mixes with air very rapidly because it moves, gases move very, very, very fast, hundreds of miles an hour. So the hydrogen mixes with the oxygen and the flame and it makes this, does it very quickly and that's where the sound comes from, that's where the big ball of fire comes from. 
But again, without the oxygen, it's not going to do that. Without popping the balloon, <coughs> it doesn't happen. And I can demonstrate that a little using this one. So here I have a <coughs> Pringles can. And again, if you've taken uh, general chemistry with me here at St. Mike's for the last seven years, you've seen this demonstration. Uh, it's a pretty cool demonstration, but there's also, just like all demonstrations, some interesting chemistry going on and things we can learn. So what I have here, again, this is hydrogen gas, and you can see it's uh, filled with hydrogen. It's lighter than air. It's actually able to support itself upright, even though there's a little bottle on there. So instead of blowing up the balloon, saw that, let's do an inside a Pringles can. So what I'm going to do is blow up the Pringles can instead, and we'll see the difference. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to fill the Pringles can up with hydrogen gas. So here's what was the bottom. There's a little hole there, and there's a quarter size hole on this end that will make the bottom. So again, I'm just filling this up. I'm going to make sure that within the Pringles can, there's only going to be hydrogen. So here we go. So now I have a hydrogen filled balloon. And what am I going to do? I'm going to blow it up. So ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Now this is pretty small, <coughs> but you might be able to see it. And even in, in, in big lecture halls, it's even harder to see. What I have on top here, the hole, you might be able to see a little bit of flame. So what's happening? Hydrogen. So again, we talked about what does it take for something to blow up to, I mean, to catch fire. The fuel source is the hydrogen. Now I had the ignition source, again the lighter, but I need oxygen again. And where is their oxygen? Well, inside the Pringles can here, it's only hydrogen. There's no oxygen inside. So what happens is hydrogen, lighter than air, comes up and then it mixes with the air all around us and it burns. So you can't even see, in fact I can't see it being this close, but again, hydrogen plus oxygen forms what? Water. So I might be able to actually, if I put this on top of here, what you might be able to see, and I'm not tested to see if you can see this or not, is there's a little bit of fuzziness, or not fuzziness, but like fog on the glass there. See, it evaporates maybe. So it's, you can see actually, if you do this, that you actually get the water con condensing onto the glass or up. Now, of course, as the hydrogen goes up, oxygen goes in, and now what we get is, hopefully you can hear that sound. So this is where I say close your ears. And it blows up. So again, uh, hopefully they'll do the sound adjustment on that because, again, it goes from not very loud, so you can hear me, to really, really loud. Uh, this is a great one because always everyone, students, adults, little kids, everybody jumps when that happens because um, they're just not expecting that to happen. You can actually hear the sound change, and you may not be able to hear it on this video, but there's actually a pitch change just before it blows up that actually allows me to use what I'll do is I'll watch everybody jump at that moment. So again, what it's doing here is demonstrating what happens on, with the hydrogen balloon, which is very, very fast. Because again, it pops it, all the oxygen mixes at once, it all burns very, very, very rapidly. Here, for a while, only, and again, you can see now, I'll put that up close to the camera, <clears throat> there's a small hole on that end and only when the hydrogen comes out and mixes with air it's able to do it. So you get uh, like about a centimeter tall fire right on top of this, sort of like a Pringles candle I like to call it. So again it's a really interesting thing and hopefully you got to see that in fact again the product is again we're reacting hydrogen H2 plus O2 and we get H2O, water. That's not balanced. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm going to keep talking about reactions uh, throughout this, and sort of the theme of this set of videos so, uh, is reactions. So what I'm going to do probably is do a few shorter videos, so I've got a few different demonstrations I can take do today, uh, and then probably do a few more. So each week you should be able to find another video, 20 minutes to a half an hour. Um, I can talk forever about chemistry, so hopefully they won't get too long. Uh, and I'll just keep having the alumni office post these each week 
uh, and then as I go through all the different demonstrations. So I'm going to move on to a couple other ones <coughs> and bring my equipment out here. So the first one I have, again, is talking about reactions. And it's, again, flaming. So I'm going to keep using my lighter for these. And this one is basically just a simple demonstration to show, again, fire. So I need a fuel source. I need oxygen and an ignition source. I'm going to use all of those. And I'm going to not burn myself with, so I'm going to use my little tongs here. So what I have here is actually a fuel source, cotton. Cotton is made mostly of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It burns very, very nicely. So yes, this is a real $50 bill. Um, now, I want it to burn so well, you know, because again, after that Pringles can, a big fire, you know, if I just light this on fire now, it's, it's not that exciting. So I'm going to basically soak it with some alcohol to make it even more flammable. So here we go. Well, we can see that. I'm just going to soak it really good. So now I've got a soaking $50 bill in alcohol. And now hopefully that'll make a nice fire. And again, more reactions, more combustion reactions. So again, when things burn, they're specifically combustion reactions. So here we go, ready. And there we go. Hopefully that's showing pretty well. And there we go. $50 bill, not harmed in any way. So again, what do we do? So again, we understand how chemistry works. So again, the dollar bill is mostly made out of, well, it's almost pure cotton. And what I soaked it in was actually a mixture of alcohol and water. So when it burned, what you saw burning, that nice fire, was just the alcohol burning. And what it leaves behind then is water. So, and again, cotton's pretty absorbent. So what I have actually, again, this is another one where I, maybe in 50 I wouldn't hand out to the audience, but I have the audience kind of feel, it's like, and it feels quite, quite wet. Uh, just like if you try to like take some wet wood and try to burn it. It doesn't burn because the water prevents it from getting very, very hot. So in this case, the water prevented the dollar bill, the $50 bill, from getting hot enough to actually catch fire. If you do this with actually pure alcohol, the alcohol burns, there's no water left, and you lose the money. So it's one you really want to test ahead of time, but I've done it with a $100 bill. Um, because again, trust the chemistry and it works out. So again, as I mentioned, my wife's watching, so I'm gonna put the money back in the wallet so I don't lose it. And uh, we didn't lose any money. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> what I'm gonna talk about now, again, sort of the same theme. Combustion and what chemists can do. So what I have here, uh, a little bit of an envelope here with just some plain cotton. So this is pure cotton, and this is actually the same thing that dollar bills are made out of. It's getting a little old and warm, so let's see, get another nice piece here. So this is pure cotton, it's just nothing's been done to it. And again, we understand what this is made out of on an elemental, on a chemical sense. So I'll do the same thing I did with the dollar bill, but again, nothing, just pure cotton, no alcohol, no nothing, and sure enough, Again, I have the ignition source, I have fuel, the cotton, and again, what else do I need? Oxygen. So where's the oxygen here? Again, just like in the all the other ones, it's all around us. Again, air is 20% oxygen, thankfully, because we can breathe it. So here, again, same thing is happening. The oxygen has to hit the piece of cotton and at that point, then it can burn. Again, they have to mix. It goes a lot slower because it's a solid. So again, it's not the, it doesn't mix. Like the hydrogen gas is able to mix with all the air around us, and that burns so much faster. This, the oxygen has to hit the surface, and then it actually will burn. Again, um, fire extinguishers. The way many fire extinguishers work is they contain carbon dioxide, which doesn't support reactions or combustion reactions and that where there's no oxygen it doesn't burn just like inside the Pringles can no oxygen it can't burn so what I have here now again a big thing that chemists do and then scientists again it's a pretty popular time to be a scientist because all the things going on and all the important 
uh, problems we have to solve using science. So this is one where, again, we understand how cotton is made on an elemental, on what building, miniature bidding, building blocks it's put together with. And once we know that, then it becomes possible to change things. So this is actually, again, pure cotton. It's the same stuff as I just burned a minute ago, except I've chemically changed it. So in other words, the molecules in this one and the molecules on this one are slightly different. I've changed a few atoms within them. So let's see what happens if I do the same reaction. I'm just going to light it on fire, do a combustion reaction. Ready? Here we go. So again, very different. I'll do it again just because because it's fun. This is my day job. So it's kind of fun to do this sort of stuff. So I'll do it again. Usually I'd say if you blinked, it's uh, you missed it, but I think this is going to be on, uh, on the computer somewhere, so just go backwards. <laughs> okay, ready? Here we go. So again, chemically altered cotton, and it reacts much, much faster. So again, that's another thing that we also try to do. So this, was call, this is called nitrocellulose or gun cotton. And the key thing here, here's the big difference. It reacted faster. So we need more of something. If it's going to react faster, it has to have more reactants. So fuel, oxygen, ignition source. Well, the ignition source was the same. The fuel was pretty much the same. It's pretty much cotton. It's the oxygen that's different. When you burn this nitrocellulose or gun cotton, it actually releases oxygen. Nitro groups have a lot of oxygen in them. So the heat of burning this, I'll do it one more time just because I can. So when this burns very rapidly, it also releases oxygen. And that release of oxygen increases the amount of oxygen present for it to burn. And then that then releases even more oxygen. So it happens what we think is very, very fast. So certainly faster than plain cotton. And all has to do with the fact that we've increased the concentration or the amount of oxygen when it burns. So it's able to burn very, very fast. And you'll, there's no smoke or anything like that um, as well. Smokeless gunpowder is another name for it. So again, some pretty neat combustion reactions we can do. Um, I got a couple more I'm going to do, and I'm going to keep talking about reactions and concentrations, and I'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by that in a minute. Um, so I'm going to clean up a couple things because, again, cleanliness is very important for safety, not just my safety glasses. Again, having an assistant nearby that's able to help just in case. So I'm going to move a couple things out. I'm also going to put my lab coat on just because this one can be a little messy. Put these back. Okay, so I have two tall cylinders. And hopefully we'll be able to see this. Okay. So what I have are two, these are called graduate cylinders with the markings on it, but they're cylinders and they have basically the same kind of chemical inside. It's called hydrogen peroxide, uh, but they're of different concentrations. So by concentration, so most of what's in here, most of this is actually water. Uh, so imagine if you had, um, trying to make lemonade and you put in one scoop of sugar into your lemonade. That's a certain concentration of sugar in the water. Now let's say you added five scoops of sugar into your lemonade. Well, we would say it's more concentrated. The sugar is more concentrated. So that's what we have here. Two different concentrations. This one has a lot. So this is highly concentrated. It's about 30 percent hydrogen peroxide. This one is about three percent. This is actually, if you go to the store and buy uh, hydrogen peroxide at the pharmacy or anything like that, the clean cuts and things like that. This is actually what you're buying. It's, it's not nearly as concentrated as what we use in the lab. So again, just like we saw with oxygen, if there was more oxygen, it went faster. 
So here, let's see what happens if we make a reaction and see if we notice any difference. So again, this one is more concentrated. This one is the kind of still sour lemonade, like if you want to use the sugar analogy again. So what I'm going to do is not change anything else. So the volumes are the same. The concentrations are different. And I'm going to add in this chemical, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, what I've got here. It's just basically to make a reaction go faster. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do it the same time even. See if we notice a difference. See if we see a reaction. I'm going to put it up a little bit. So this is a decomposition reaction. And you might be able to see, well, one's turned color already. And you start seeing bubbles forming. So this is actually a decomposition reaction. And you see how this one's going slow, hopefully? This one, this one, they'll turn the same color eventually. Also, the neat thing about this reaction is they get warm. It's an exothermic reaction. It gives off heat, like hand warmers and things like that. So this one's starting to get warmer. And you might see it's starting to go faster still. So you can see the bubbles now really starting to form on the one on my right. The other one, it's definitely reacting. It's just going slower because of the concentration. So again, this is actually a really nice demonstration. And what we have here is forming bubbles. This is actually bubbles of pure oxygen. Uh, when you put hydrogen peroxide on a cut, the same thing happens. You see bubbles. That's bubbles of, hydrogen, of oxygen being formed as the hydrogen peroxide breaks down. So again, this is going to keep fizzing for a little while. If it gets really hot, it goes faster and faster and faster. This is a great demonstration. And you can actually do some science fair type experiments with this and understanding how concentration can change the reaction speed. So we've seen a few of them like that here, where again, higher concentration, more things to react, it goes faster. So this one actually, this is actually a, a very, very popular demonstration right here. This is actually called, uh, hopefully you might, if you recognize the term hydrogen peroxide, and now it's this demos everywhere. This is the elephant's toothpaste demonstration. This is the actual reaction. So you're not seeing all the giant mess and foam and everything, but this is actually what's happening. It's a decomposition of this. And what I added to the solution was something, this is specifically called potassium iodide, or potassium iodide. So this is a, it's a salt, just like sodium chloride or table salt. So it's a salt, and it works as a catalyst. It speeds up reactions. So catalysts are, most people have not heard of catalysts. Even a lot of people going to college haven't heard of catalysts before. But it's actually, catalysts are some of the most important materials in the world. Uh, most food is at some point produced from fertilizers made by catalysts. All um, petrochemicals, all plastics, all gasoline, diesel, all of these materials are made in part using catalysts to speed up reactions. Um, in fact, if you take this one that's going still pretty slowly, partly due to concentration, if you just have pure hydrogen peroxide, it decomposes on its own. If you, it just doesn't last for years. So you know, if you buy brand new hydrogen peroxide, a few years later, there's none left. It's reactive. So catalysts are a way to make things go faster, but more by changing the way they, uh, by the way they actually go. Um, one of my favorite analogies is you know, think of trying to get from point A to point B, uh, but there's a mountain in between. So you know, so you have reactants, or you have hydrogen peroxide on one side of the mountain, and pure oxygen is on the other. The reaction is on the other side. Well, instead of going up and over the mountain and thinking of all the energy. If you've hiked a mountain up and down, it takes a lot of energy. Well, a catalyst sort of makes a new way of doing it. So instead of going up and over the mountain, it makes a tunnel through it. So imagine you're trying to get from a mountain, instead of driving up all, or hiking all the way up and over a mountain, imagine walking through a tunnel just through the mountain. It takes a lot less energy and it's a lot faster. That's what catalysts do. And, and they really are one of the most important things in all of society to make all the modern things we have. We just, they're hidden. Um, so that's kind of the thing. So again, this is the elephant's toothpaste. So again, you're still going. You can see it's, it's not going too, too fast because I didn't add a lot of the catalyst. So what I'm going to do is end with this reaction, just like we would do for real. So.
what I'm going to do is, in fact, the elephant's toothpaste demonstration. So we do this um, a lot in our magic shows, and you know, now it's gotten to the point where how big and how messy and how wasteful can you be with these uh, demonstrations? So, you know, there's some that are just way bigger than this, and I don't want to go any larger than this because at a certain point, I think it starts wasting chemicals to, to learn a few things. So here we got a larger flask. And again, we're going to use the same chemical. So this is hydrogen peroxide, not the stuff you buy in the store, but the stuff we use in the lab. So I'm going to use, use a fair bit of it. And again, if I just added the catalyst now to this, what you'd see is just like I showed you before, lots of bubbles. Because again, the product is oxygen gas. But what do we do? Well, hey, how do we capture bubbles? Soap. So what I'm going to do is add a little soap. So the soap does nothing except capture the bubbles. And well, of course, you know, if you're making elephant's toothpaste, you need flavoring. So we, you know, if you do the demonstration, so this is it's red food coloring? No, it's strawberry flavoring. So we'll add a little strawberry flavoring because it's nice when you get it streaked down. And of course, you know, elephants like all sorts of flavors. So is this green food coloring? No, it's apple. Why apple? Because I like apple. And what do these two do? They make it exciting because again, uh, actually, I find the one without anything in it pretty exciting because it's some chemistry and you can look at speeds reactions. So now what I have is the same peroxide as the previous reaction, very high concentration. I've got some soap just to capture the bubbles and some food coloring for a little wow factor. And right now this is reacting. This hydrogen peroxide is in fact breaking down to form water and oxygen gas. It's going very, very slowly. I could come back in two years from now and it won't be done yet. So again, talking about catalysts, that's a, so going from point A to point B here is with this great big mountain energy barrier. You know, so it goes slowly. So what we do is we add a catalyst. So now this is going to help this reaction go underneath the mountain and get to the end very, very fast. And very messily. <laughs> okay, ready? So this is the last demonstration. And uh, yeah, here we go. Ready? So again, you get a nice striping there. So that's just like good toothpaste. So again, all you need is an elephant and a toothbrush that's about this big and you're all set to go. Okay, so that's the end of this first set of demonstrations. Uh, again, I hope you've enjoyed these. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is have a resource link posted at the bottom of this video to, uh, there's all sorts of stuff from the American Chemical Society, which I'm a member of as well, uh, that actually has resources for uh, things you can do safely at home, some interesting things. And the key thing is not just to see oohs and ahs, but really try to understand what's happening here but also try to understand the big picture. So it's not just about understanding how this um, demonstration works, but also looking at where are catalysts used. I mean, finding 10 important uses for catalysts would take you know, a minute. Uh, and you'd be surprised how, how popular and how common they are in everything you have. So that's the other thing. I hope you uh, take time to explore a little bit about not just these demonstrations, but about the big picture and how it uh, impacts the world around us. So thanks very much for watching. And again, we'll uh, be able to uh, have another one posted up next week. Thanks.